All right, my guest tonight is uh, the the hilarious, the eccentric, <laughs> the intelligent, highly intelligent, and always interesting Jeffrey Gurian. Comedy. I thought he was the king of comedy when I first saw him, because he just looks like he's in charge of comedy. Don Juan meets Hugh Hefner meets Phil Spector in terms of if I if I had to like bottle him up or whatever. Encapsulate him in something. He's, uh, he's singular pretty much in everything. Everything about him is individual. From the hair, which I'm sure many people have talked about already, uh, to his, his literal, literally rose colored glasses, I think, right? <laughs> he, he literally has rose colored glasses. Um, I love Jeffrey. I love Jeffrey. He was at a restaurant, I'm sitting around, and I up. They would serve some ice cream, I didn't have a spoon, and this motherfucker pulls out a spoon. <laughs> I'm like, who the fuck carries a spoon? Now wait a minute, isn't Jeffrey it? carries around a fucking spoon? Mason, I'm envious of righteous. Jeff. It's, it's a righteous thing, man. It really is. Jeff is amazing. Uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah, Jeffrey is just unique, but in just such a uh, an endearing, genuine way. He's got a gentle spirit, a warmth. He's very touchy feely. Uh, yeah, he's touch. He's, he's, he's very healer. tactile. He's a healer. He's a healer. And you feel that. With, uh, no, you know. All joking aside, when he touches you, there's a warmth to it. There's a. It's very present. Uh, I don't know if that warmth comes from the hair. You know, maybe that it was all tied together. It was an electrical <laughs> incident. But, he's always. Uh, I love when he's at the shows. He's. He just. Yes. Yeah. He's always uh, like a calming presence. Yeah. Jeffrey knows everybody in comedy in the comedy business. He knows uh, people that aren't in comedy yet. They're going to be. That's right. Yeah. He's got like a file. He tracks people down before they're even comedians. <laughs> if you don't know Jeffrey, then you're probably not a comedian. You know, you're not really a comedian because he's just that entrenched in the business, and you know, he's a, like John said. He's he's everywhere. He pops up. You know, you're never surprised to see Jeffrey. You know what? They should get that motherfucker in his own show. <laughs> Jeffrey, don't take my picture. <laughs> the last time I heard sounds like that, I was at Michael Vick's house. <laughs> like that one, Jeffrey, should I do that on stage? Town to get to the oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. well, You never know. It's yeah. great to see you, man. Good to see you. Always good to see, see you. you. Hello, Jeffrey. Right. Look at all the, the, all the pretty women taking pictures of you. We should be taking pictures of you. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's an alternate universe. Did you so, welcome to Night of Too Many Stars, Sarah. Oh, awesome. So take this as an invitation. Anytime oh. you want to come to the comic strip, I will definitely do that. Will you? Oh, yeah, cool. I promise I'll come by. I know, I know, I know my history. <laughs> I love the interview that you gave us well, for the book. It was and phenomenal. Good luck with that. Thank you. It was great to see you. Good to see you, see you as well. Take care. He has great taste in women, but tonight his date is a dog. He is a producer, a director, a radio announcer, an author. Have I left anything out? Actor? Comedian, <laughs> plumber, dentist. He's a dentist. <laughs> Please give it up for rumor. Jeffrey Gurian. Thank you, Sharon. The dentist thing is just a rumor. It started when I graduated from dental school. <laughs> am I actually am I in this book somewhere? Yeah, you are. That's, good, man. That's good. Did you write me that joke good. too? <laughs> I got a uh, question for Will Ferrell. Um, I understand that you have a degree. Multitask. Yeah. Multitask, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what is the next sport that you'd like to do? I'd love to do an expose on a guy who interviews people with a handheld mic <laughs> <laughs> and, video camera, and just travels the world and, and, and creates a new sport. Um, 
most of the, like the good conversation <laughs> happens, and, like, the good like relationship the building. If I'm, yeah, the bonding. If I'm not there, I'm gonna miss it. So I go down and like occasionally have a have a puff or whatever. It's a good thing they don't do drugs. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> comedy? Do you enjoy comedy? And would you ever do stand up? I do not have the balls big enough, excuse my French, to do comedy. I, I don't think I'd be able to handle hecklers very well. You beat them up. Right? I get, yeah. It's like, and that's not funny. I'd like to see that. I think you lose the audience when that happens, that don't you? That would be a great sketch on SNL yeah, that's of funny. a comic who takes on the audience. That would yeah. be great. <laughs> that would be funny. Would be right? Any desire to do comedy? Yeah, I think I do. I think I do comedy all the time. I just don't do like the... I try, I mean, I try not, but I just haven't ended up in a lot of, like, just comments. What I like best is that you're breaking down a stereotype. Until recent years, no one knew that Indian people could be funny. It just wasn't, it wasn't happening. And then, would you actually ever like to do comedy? I, I'd love to, yeah. What are your concerns about doing comedy? Romantic comedy. Coming your way. Yeah. <laughs> you have a real comedic flair. Have you ever thought of trying stand-up comedy? Or no. Anything? Oh, no. No? I have utmost respect for stand-ups, but writing your own material and then hoping that people find it funny would just make me so insecure. It's like the hardest it. thing in the world. I Weren't you on Dancing with the Stars? No. no they, didn't, they didn't hook me up for years, so I quit. Yeah. <laughs> that would be my part. Sydney turned it into a Greek tragedy. That was Sidney's idea, like, oh, you know, this would work. And that's where his knowledge about the, he's got a lot of knowledge about the history of storytelling. Melodrama was what he wanted to call it. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> calls anything a melodrama anymore. That genre doesn't exist anymore. I want to ask you on a, a personal question about this. Do you think that, uh, in general, that men would risk everything for sex? I mean, we did. I got to think about that. <laughs> I got a call. The secretary, he gets back from China today and he's very sick. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't say I said it. <laughs> and then he came. And how did you name such a violent man, Dorothy? Where did that come from? I something to do with the Wizard of Oz. I, I want to <laughs> yeah, I so. so, I heard a couple of stories. First, that this was your first paid gig, was at the comic strip. And yeah, cha ching, seven dollars. Wow. Yeah. That must have felt great, huh? You remember? Give it all to my wife. <laughs> and she put us a down payment yeah, on a yeah, house, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Jeffrey, when you gave me that bone marrow, you saved my entire family. <laughs> this guy, I said, my dad needs a kidney. He didn't ask. He reached behind it, ripped the thing out, handed it over to me. I love the man. <laughs> want to welcome you here. You're one of the Comic Strip family. First of all, thank you. Thank you. You know I love you already. Uh, so Good to see you. Good to see you too, Richie. Richie Tinkin, I like to call Richie the godfather of comedy. He always was the godfather of comedy, but now that he speaks this way, he's really the godfather. Thank you for coming on, bro. It's good to see you, man. Continue. I wish you continued success. Best writer I've ever met, and you're a, and you're a phenomena. Hi, I just ran into an old friend of mine, Jeffrey Gurian. And that it just rude. opened. That wasn't rude at all, and I kind of like that, actually. Um, Did you cut it? We have to go take a minute. I walked. He's the first white guy I know that rode around in a um, pink El Dorado, or a pink or tangerine, that he brought from underneath the fingernails of one of the Isley brothers. You gotta be fucking pimp to do some shit like that. He is mystical. I mean, you're, I can understand what you're saying, but you can't. He's a level 12 pimp, and you. For real. They should give him two shows. They should give that motherfucker two shows. <laughs>